Hey there, how's it going? Today I want to try out the Missile 5CLI and then spend some time exploring the Devsil 2 small model. Alongside the release of the Devsil 2 models, Mistral also published the Missile 5CLI, an open source command line coding assistant. It provides an interactive chat interface with tools for file manipulation, code searching, version control, and command execution. You can explore, modify, and execute changes across your code base using natural language from the terminal or integrate it into your preferred IDE through the agent communication protocol. The key features include project-aware contacts, smart references so you can reference files, execute shell commands, and use slash commands for configuration changes, multi-file orchestration, persistent history, auto-completion, and awesome customizable themes. You can run Vibe CLI programmatically for scripting, configure local models and providers, and control tool permissions with auto-approval to match your workflow. Next, let me show you how to get started with this tool. To get started with Mistral Vibe CLI, you can download and install the tool by running this script from the GitHub repo. If you're using Windows, you can also use UV or PIP to install it. Now I'm using Mac OS, but I also have Python and UV installed, so I will use the UV script here. Copy this command, open your terminal, paste the script, and then press enter. Let the installation proceed, and once finished, you can run the tool using the vibe command. When you run the tool for the first time, there will be a short intro as seen here. Press enter and then you can choose the theme to use in Vibe CLI. They have all kinds of popular themes for the tool. I will select the Dracula theme for now. And next, you will be guided to get the API key from Mistral to use with the CLI. Click the link here and you will be taken to Mistral console. Just register for a free account if you haven't already. And once you're inside, you can generate your API key over here. Just do that. I will name this as Vibe CLI to easily recognize which key I'm using for the tool. Once the key is created, copy it, and then back in the terminal, paste the key. Press enter, and now Mistral Vibe CLI is ready to go. First, this tool has several slash commands where you can adjust the config, the model, view the log files, and so on. If you want to change the active model, you can run the slash model command, there are devstral2, devstral small, and local model, so you can also run this CLI tool with local AI models from LM Studio or Olama. And then we can interact with the model from the CLI, just type in the chat here. And after a second, here's the response from the model. Next, the CLI also has several modes which you can toggle using the shift plus tab keys. There is the plan mode, accept edits mode, and auto approve mode in addition to the default mode. Okay, now that the Vibe CLI is running, you can use it to build your app. Let's try to complete a task with it. So here in VS Code, I have a project prepared for this demo. It's a personal finance application created using Next.js and Tailwind. In the agents file over here, there is the complete stack information. We have Next.js and TypeScript, Hellwind and Shadcn for the CSS, SQLite for the database, and Drizzle as the ORM. There is also Recharts for charts and React Lucid for icons. Let's quickly view this project on the browser. So run npm run dev to start the development server. And here's the project. We have a dashboard showing the financial information of a person. And then there are several menus on the side. These are still in progress. So we can add new account or delete existing account. Now if we go to transactions page, this page is still empty. So do the budgeting and the goals pages here. Okay, so we're going to use the Vibe CLI to work on this project. Let's open a new terminal here and then run the Vibe command. Let's expand this window. Okay, here you can interact with the Vibe CLI and when you want to open the files, you can do so easily from VS Code. For now, let's ask the agent to build a transactions page. Allow users to view, create, edit, delete transactions with filters, search, and category for easy navigation. Reuse as much style and components as possible. Press enter and let the agent process the request. After a second, the agent will start by creating a to-do list as you can see here. And then it will start creating new files or edit the files as required. It will ask for your permission to do that, so just allow it. The task will take a while to complete, so I will skip a bit to when it's finished. Okay, so here the agent has finished the request. 
It actually encountered some errors while working on the test, but the DevShow 2 model simply retry and fix the issues automatically. It then provided a short summary describing the changes performed on the project. That's pretty nice, so let's see if the app is working. Okay, here on the browser, we get some errors when navigating to the transactions page. It seems to have to do with the search param properties, and then the select component here can't be an empty string. So when you see errors like this, just go back to the CLI and then tell it you got errors as follows. Press enter and let the agent work to fix the errors. I will fast forward a bit to when the agent is finished. Alright, so the errors have been fixed by DevStroll. We can see the locks over here. Now let's get back to the browser. And yep, the transactions page seems to be working now. Let's do a little test. I will try to create a new transaction here. We can choose the account to do the transaction. And then the type, whether income or expense. And then enter amount, date, description, and category. Okay, so we can create a new transaction here. And then we can delete it as well. For now, I think the page is working. But yeah, that's how you can use Vibe CLI to work on tasks. Now, there is one more interesting feature of this tool that I want to mention, and that is Vibe CLI has support for agent skills. This feature enables you to provide agents with new capabilities and expertise. Agent skills are folders of instructions, scripts, and resources that agents can discover and use to do things more accurately and efficiently. To create a skill, you simply need to create a folder with a markdown file named skill.md. You can view the details on this website, but let me show you how to add skills for Vibe CLI. So in your project, create a new folder, call this .vibe to store configurations and skills for Vibe CLI, then create a new folder called skills, and in this folder, create another folder to contain your skill instructions and scripts. I'm going to create a code reviewer skill here, and then create a new markdown file, call this skill.md. This file will serve as the entry point for your skill. You can specify the name and description of the skill as well as the instructions. I'm going to paste a skill that I have prepared. So here it is. This code reviewer skill is designed to flag critical issues on a project. First, there's the core principle to flag only high priority and not low noise issues. Flag box, security issues, breaking changes, not style preferences, minor improvements, nitpickings, or typos. And then there is the workflow, start with establishing review scope, gather critical context, and identify critical issues. There is also common critical patterns to check, and then tell it to get contacts from agents or cloud markdown file if they exist. Alright, let's try to run this skill. First, we need to restart the Vibe CLI, so just exit the tool, and then run a new session. It will ask if we want to load the .vibe folder configuration and tools, so just say yes. And now the skill is loaded, let's ask it about the skill here. Do you have the code reviewer skill? Okay, so Michelle can find the skill we added earlier, so let's tell it to review the code base now. It will run a few commands to find relevant files and read them. I will fast forward to when the agent is finished. Okay, so the agent finally completed the review. We can see the report on the terminal here. It has 12 high severity issues, and then here are the top 3 issues with the app. And then there are the key statistics and recommendations. We can also view a more detailed report in this code review markdown file. It lists the files containing the issues, the impact, and then possible fix for these issues. There is also the roadmap for fixing the issues, both for short term and long term. So it's pretty nice to have this skill. We can use the AI to review the project in just a few minutes. If you like the DevSol 2 model, then the Vibe CLI is definitely a great companion for it. This tool helps you get the most out of the AI model. It also has advanced configurations where you can customize the system prompts and create custom agents. You can check out the documentation for details to do so. Now, before we end the video, let's briefly explore the DevSol 2 small model. 
This model has 24 billion parameters, and it excels at using tools to explore your code base, editing multiple files, and power software engineering agents. The model is quite small, and it can be run on consumer device with at least 32GB of RAM. I'm going to try it out locally from LM Studio. Over here, I already have the model downloaded. If you want to try it out as well, you can find it from LM Studio as shown here. Once the model is downloaded, go to the terminal tab, and then run the development server so that your AI tools can connect to it from the local host. Note that you need to increase the context length as the default value of 4000 token will not be enough to run AI tools like KiloCode. I'm going to adjust this value to 200,000 tokens, but if your computer can't handle it, then somewhere around 40,000 or 80,000 tokens could work. Alright, now that LM Studio is ready, I'm going back to VS Code, and then I'm going to open Kilo Code here, and then configure the AI provider. Here, I already have LM Studio as a profile, so I can switch to that, and then adjust the selected model to Devsol too small like this. Now, click Save and Done, and then in the chat box, change the active provider to LM Studio. And that's it. Let's see how Devsol too small can be used for agentic tasks. Back in the application, I have view details button in the accounts page here, but when I click on it, nothing happens. The same goes with the menu here, there is the edit details option, but the feature is not yet implemented. So I'm going to test the devso 2 model here, build the view details and edit accounts function for the accounts page. Just like that, send the prompt in, and now KiloCode will connect to LM Studio, and the devso 2 small model will work on the request. If we switch back to LM Studio here, notice that we have logs from the server for the prompt processing progress. It will take some time for this to complete, so I will fast forward a bit to highlight only the progress. First, the agent will scan the current code base, uh, reading relevant files, and then it will create a to-do list to implement the functions, and then it will begin to write new files required to complete the feature, as well as editing existing files. This process really took some time, probably about 20 to 30 minutes at this point. But after a moment, the AI is stuck at the running build command over here, so I decided to stop the task, and then open a new chat, switch to killer code provider, but use the same devso to small model. I asked it to complete the remaining task, which is to connect the view detail component to the main accounts page, and it did so successfully. All in all, it probably took about one hour just to complete this task. So let's see the result real quick on the browser. Click the view details button here. Okay, we can see the account details, although the design can be improved, some margins around the content would be nice. And there's also an edit button added here. So let's try to edit the account next. Maybe change the name and then also the amount. Update the account. Alright, the account here can be updated successfully. So yeah, the DevSol 2 small model is quite capable for smaller tasks. It can read an existing code base, write and edit files to fulfill your requests, all while running locally. That said, the inference speed of running LLMs locally is still much slower when compared to using AI providers like Kilo Code. Here, I'm running this on a Mac M2 Pro with 32GB of RAM, and making changes to a single page took about an hour. Still, this is less a limitation of the Devso 2 small model and more of a reflection of where local inference is today. The model is clearly capable, and as the tooling and hardware continue to improve, this kind of workflow is only going to get more practical. And that brings us to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Missile Vibe CLI and the Devso 2 small model? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I help you learn how to code and use AI tools. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell, like this video, all the good stuff as it really helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end and I'll see you in other videos. Bye!